It's like I don't care about nothing, man. <laughs> yeah. What's going on guys? This video is going to be on hinge theorem. So you should be able to look at two different triangles and be able to tell me which one's going to have the bigger side based on the angles. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, so the top of this one we have hinge theorem compares two triangles. If two sides of a triangle are congruent, and if you don't remember the symbol for congruent, it's the equal sign with the squiggly. So if it's congruent to two sides of another triangle, and the included angle of the first triangle is greater than the second triangle, then the third side of the first triangle is larger than the third side of the second triangle. Now, I think this will make more sense when we look at uh, number one. So the idea is if it has the bigger angle, it's going to have the bigger side. So let's look at this one here for number one. Which side is longer, AC or DF? Defend your answer. So we're going to have to fight somebody, you know. Now, when we do this one, you for hinge theorem, you have to have two sides congruent. So they do have that. So this side is congruent to this side, this side to this side. Now, when we find out which other side is bigger, we're going to base it off the angle. So, tough question for you. What degree is bigger, 63 or 82? I'm pretty sure, unless you're trying to trick me like you math teachers like to do, that the answer is 82 is bigger. Mm -hmm. That is correct. 82 is bigger. So since it's bigger, this one across from it will be the bigger side. So we are going to say DF is greater than AC because 82 degrees is greater than 63 degrees. So defending our answer is just giving the reason why we chose that answer. Okay, so now number two, using the hinge theorem, determine which side is longer in each triangle. Defend your answer. So in order to use hinge theorem, you have to have two sides congruent. So we've been told AC and CB are congruent. That's one side being congruent to each other. The other one would be one that we can assume because we see it because it shares the side. When they share a side, just like this is doing, that's called reflexive. So in case you forgot, you might want to write that down for yourself. Now, in order to find which one is bigger though, we're going to base it off the angle. So again, very tough question. Make sure you have your thinking cap on. Which degree is bigger? So if you're, if you're not trying to trick me again, I'm going to go with 32 is the bigger number. Mm -hmm. Yes, 32 is bigger so across from it will be the bigger side so our answer is rb is greater than ar because so this is where we have to defend our answer it's because 32 degrees is greater than 18 degrees Okay, so now we're on page four. I want to do uh, part A for number five. Now, it says find the range of all possible values for x. So when we do a range, uh, I want us to end up with an answer that is telling us anything that can be in between the smallest value and the, uh, the biggest value that we can use in this one. 
So we are going to be using Hinge Theorem. Now, when we do this, to use Hinge Theorem, you have to have two sides congruent. I've already been told this side and this side are congruent. Now, based on the numbers, I can also know that this side is congruent because they both have 50 for a side length. So now, when I try to figure out which one's going to be bigger, the 47 or the 5x plus 2, I'm going to base it off the angles. Now, 68 degrees is bigger than 55 degrees. So since this is bigger, across from it will be the bigger side. So 47 is going to be bigger than the 5x plus 2. So the 5x plus 2 will be the smaller side. So what that tells me is that this side over here cannot be a number bigger than 47. So my max value would be 47. Now for a lowest value, a lowest value, no side in a triangle can be zero or a negative number. So when I go to set this up, I'm going to be using this equation, 5x plus 2. Now on the left side, I want to set that equal to zero. Because that zero is the lowest value. You, it can't be zero because the side length has to be greater than zero. So when I'm finding my x value, it has to be some number that's greater than zero, but it's going to have to be less than 47. So on the right side, I'm going to have 5x plus 2 equals 47. So really, I just have to now solve each side to find my range. So over here on the left side, I'm going to start off by subtracting 2 to both sides. That will get me 5x equals negative 2. Last step, divide by 5 on each side. And x equals negative 2 over 5. So on the left side of this, I'll have negative 2 over 5 less than x less than. Now we just need to find what's going to be on the right side. So, just like how we started the last one, we're going to start off by subtracting 2 to both sides. You have 5x equals 45. Divide by 5. And x equals 9. So... The variable, the x, can be any number in between negative 2 over 5 and 9. Now, a little hint for you is that the left side, when we set it up for what the smallest value potentially can be, it's almost always going to just be equal to 0. So that's a little hint for you whenever you're doing these types of problems. So that's the end of this video. So hinge theorem, main things to know. So you have two sides have to be congruent on the two triangles. Then you're going to look at the angle and see which one's going to have the bigger side. So just remember, bigger, uh, bigger angle, bigger side, bigger angle, bigger side. You remember that? You should be golden for hinge theorem.